Okay, in this presentation, we're going to look at the Pareto type two distribution, also known as the Lomax distribution, okay? Depending on what sort of subject area you're working with, you might know it by one of these two different names, okay? Now, it's quite commonly used in actuarial sciences, and that's the motivation for this worked example. Claim size for an auto insurance coverage follows a Pareto type two Lomax distribution with a mean of 7.5 and a variance of 243.75 determine the probability that a randomly selected claim will be greater than 10 so x is the value of a claim okay and we it is modeled using a its claim value and it's modeled using a pareto distribution okay so here's a couple of the things this is the sort of details for the Pareto type 2 distribution. Remember, there's a type 1 distribution as well. Uh, we have alpha, the shape parameter, and lambda, the scale parameter. Okay, and here's all the details here. Now, what it, we're interested in particularly is the question asks us for the probability of x greater than 10. Okay, so we'll use the cumulative distribution function, or in fact, the inverse of that, okay, Sorry, not the inverse, the complement of that, which is to say uh, 1 plus x over lambda to the power of minus alpha. Okay, so that's the probability of x being greater than a certain value, small x to be the name of a certain value. So it's 1 plus x over lambda to the power of minus alpha. Now, the thing is, we actually have to find out what lambda and alpha uh, are, the values are, okay? So we're gonna use these two pieces of information that the mean is 7.5 and the variance is 243.75, okay? So we have more information here. The mean is lambda divided by alpha minus one, okay? So for alpha minus one, undefined otherwise, Okay, now it's under, it, it means that alpha must be greater than one because we know we actually have a value. Okay, so it, alpha has to be greater than one. So, you know, we don't have to worry about that because we actually know our value already. Okay, we don't, we don't have to worry about that in this instance. The variance, uh, alpha greater than two. Okay, and again, it is, uh, we hope it's greater than two, but we know. It, we know a variance value exists and it's finite, so we know that alpha must be greater than two, okay? The values exist actually, so essentially we could just, we don't have to worry about these constraints too much. So what we're gonna do here is use the method of moments, okay? And I'm just gonna go back up here a second. It was a bit too quick there. Uh, what we notice was, is we have lambda divided by alpha minus one. That's the mean, and the variance is alpha squared times lambda divided by alpha minus one squared, okay? Uh, so essentially, the mean is a factor of the variance. Like, you know, if you have the mean, you can square it and multiply it by another term to find the variance, if you know the other term, okay? So this is what we, so we, we can divide across here. So the variance divided by the expected value of x to be squared, okay? So these are the terms here, you can look them up, okay? The variance is lambda squared times alpha over alpha minus one squared times alpha minus two, and the, the expected value of x squared is the mean squared, lambda squared over lambda minus one squared. So essentially a whole big chunk of it cancels out. So what happens here. And you end up with this expression here, alpha divided by alpha minus two is the ratio of the variance divided by the expected value to be squared, okay? So what we're gonna do is solve for alpha. Alpha, the expected value of x is 7.5, the variance is 43.75. So we divide the variance by the mean squared 243.75 by 7.5 squared, which is 56.25, we get 4.33, okay? Uh, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna re-express that as 13 divided by three, 
okay 13 divided by 3 okay so when we cross multiply alpha divided by alpha minus 2 equals 13 over 3 cross multiply and you should get alpha equals 2.6 okay and it just it fits our criteria that we had earlier on that it's greater than one and it's greater than two just not that it matters but you know just always be conscious of that okay we are told that the mean is 7.5 okay so lambda divided by alpha minus one is lambda divided by 2.6 minus one which is 1.6 okay so Cross multiply 7.5 times 1.6 gives you 12. Okay, so that's great. Now, so we have all our values there. Um, so we go back to the probability of x being greater than some value x. Okay, uh, that is 1 minus the cumulative distribution function. Okay, probability of x greater than x okay capital x greater than small x where x is the claim values and small x is a certain number um just working it out well actually there we have it there i that i sort of have a duplication there i don't need the formula works out to be 1 plus x over 12 to the power of minus 2.6 okay and we're asked for the value of x greater than or equal to 10, which is 1 plus 10 over 12 to the power of minus 2.6, 11 over 6 to the power of minus 2.6, 20%. 0, 2, uh, 0 0.2068, okay, 20.68%. So that's it. We'll leave it there.